This is the reflective video for advanced modelling in the games engine showing how I took my semester one project and improved it. I just hide those, you can see inside the scene. This is what it began as in 3ds Max. Each of the elements were exported all together. So all the pillars, all the columns, all the stalactites, the rock formations, coral, etc. And I hate to say it, but that water texture looks awful. But I couldn't really do much with that in here as I needed the shaders from the engine. Okay, speaking of textures, most textures were made in the same way. We had the diffuse texture, which is basic colour, bit of detailing, then um, baking down high poly to low poly I got a normal map to give some depth and using the normal map I grayscaled it for a specular map. The only difference with all of the textures was the coral texture. The coral texture didn't have an emissive. I changed it or swapped it out for an emissive texture. So that was my coral texture with the normals and then I did an emissive map to go over the top because I wanted the corals to glow. So with them glowing and with them being so small I didn't I felt I didn't really need a specular map there. So with all the textures done in Photoshop, put them into UDK. So if you see here, I made sure I had all my packages separate so I could see what I was doing. So I've got materials, say, for example, the coral material. when it loads had um, basic diffuse with a multiplier to make it brighter and then I put a bit of specular on using a multiplier and a constant but as I didn't really need it I mostly focused on putting the emissive in with the texture samples and using constants, oh, don't need that one, to, I've crashed it now, wonderful, to um, achieve the brightness that I wanted. So, oh. I say, the corals turned out really well. So you can see, especially on this purple one and the flat fan, the emissives are really bright, really quite neon, which is the effect I was going for. And so I do think the best one that turned out were the tubes as I used the veins as the reference for where I wanted the emissives to go. So the water material, obviously, that was used in 3ds Max is not being used here. That is, is um, a completely separate set of water shaders. So, so if I bring up, put that back over there and bring up the water material. You should see... Um, the complete disaster 
that is the shader. So I did follow um, a couple of tutorials for this from Herenses. They were the best ones I could find. But I didn't really like the um, blurring and the um, blending you got with the outdoor water because it showed you how to blend it in for when you get close to the bank but of course I didn't need that. So it's a mix of everything, lots of multipliers, lots of constants, few parameters but it created this lovely flowing water texture that is used on the floor. So it's nice and translucent, you can see the rock floor beneath it, gives it a real a realistic feel. The waterfalls were done in pretty much the same manner except using a, um, a panner to make it flow downwards. So I did have a couple of problems with this but tracing it back all I'd done was put the UVs upside down. Easy mistake to make. So originally with the corals they weren't as bright as I wanted them but um, adding more constants to it didn't do anything um, so I decided to use a lot of little point lights oops lots of little point lights to just add that much needed pop of colour and light within the scene One of the main issues I had here was actually making it feel making it feel how I wanted it to feel to making the making the mood right. So it's supposed to be it's definitely large and it's definitely imposing, but it seemed quite plain. I wanted to make it more fantasy based. I know it's supposed to be realistic, but it's a shrine, it's ma it's magical, it's holy, it's it needed something more. So and that's when this came into being. So I did um the shafts of light, yet yeah, would give a really nice effect and work really well, especially with the water. So, cut a hole in the outside and made it feel more part of it by putting the columns there so it didn't look out of place. And then, directional. So, all in all, I think it turned out a lot better than expected. Oh, saving itself. And it definitely matches the references used to um, evaluate it last semester. It was Sophia Lamb's Garden from Bioshock 2. Consequently, um, Bioshock 2 was also inspiration for the method and the ethics behind this redesign. So in taking what I've got, improving each bit to build up the scene rather than scrapping the lot and starting again. Okay, so, a final look around my scene in Engine. Yep. And thank you for watching.